Um, a lot of people don't understand what counterparty risk is, but it's really simple. If you and I make an agreement, if you don't hold up your end or I don't hold up my end, then that's counterparty risk. Whereas with gold, there is no counterparty risk because you hold it and own it. It's not a contract. It's a tangible asset that also has the broadest base of buyer. Everything else is counterparty risk. Currencies are all based on the full faith and credit of the government. That's a counterparty risk. What about, well, we see what just happened with FTX, right? And the cryptocurrency debacle that's still continuing to play out and it's like dominoes falling. But you don't have that with gold. You don't have that at all with gold because you hold it, it's in my possession. And it's in, for all intents and purposes, even though you can see it right here, it disappears. And we've just seen that central banks have bought more gold third quarter alone in 2022 than they ever have in history. And again, you know, gold held at home runs no political risk because they can't see it, right? Even though it's it's real and it's tangible, once it's out of the system, it is invisible to them. And what the central banks are really attempting to do with CBDCs is make absolutely everything you do visible and controllable by them. But this isn't. And that's why that's why they're accumulating it because they want to stay in power but they're not going to tell you about it. They're going to do what they can by pushing down the price so that you think, oh, well, gold isn't really, even though it really did outperform pretty much everything last year. Uh, but still, why would you want it? No, you don't want it. So, but yeah, gold held it, it's invisible to them. They can't control it. They can only control through perception management how you think about it. But once you know the truth, they've lost you. Like they've lost me. They can say anything you want. I know the truth and I hold it in my vault. The spot market is a contract, right? So they can create a whole bunch of gold that does not nor ever will exist. So in the short term, anything is possible. If the spot markets, whether they're gold or silver, actually reflected the true deficit for gold or silver, the prices, if it was a true free market, would be a lot higher. So, and again, a rising gold price is an indication of a failing currency. Governments <laughs> and central banks do not want you or I to know that the currency is failing. And, and the other piece that I would like to kind of throw in here, and that is, we all work. I mean, the reason why we have money to begin with is so that a society can specialize and you have a farmer, you have a baker, you have a lawyer, et cetera. And so they needed a tool to make sure that you're always fairly paid for your labor. And that's why gold became the primary currency metal because it's the only one that actually does it. So you have your gold and you're trading your labor for somebody else's labor, which is a fair exchange. But no matter when you use it, you will always be fairly paid for your labor, although yeah. not with the spot market. And by the way, the CBDCs uh, recently, I don't know when they changed this, but I could tell you I was very troubled when I saw it. It was preparing for some event and I went in and looked at the functions of gold and um, at the treasury, because I wanted to you know, capture that image, and they removed the short-term store of value because dollars, government money, through inflation, robs you of that. So it forces you to take risk so that you can maintain what you already work for. You know the, uh, okay, you know a yield curve inversion a global yield curve inversion just occurred. Do you know that that has never happened since they began tracking the global yield curve? So this is a first time in history. And what that's telling us is that something extraordinarily nasty this way comes. 
and look at all the warnings we're getting about yeah. forced selling and market drops and corporate earnings and inflation and blah, blah, blah. It's because we're shifting systems. But this has proven to go through all of those calamities. It's a key component of dynastic wealth, which is wealth that lasts in families at least 300 years. And we are, we are in for it huge in 2023. I don't have um, a, a positive or a negative. I mean, I do know that we're going into to some form of cryptocurrencies and probably the CBDCs. But what if, what if all of these cryptocurrencies were created to get the population comfortable enough to adopt a CBDC? What if it was never really intended to be a long-term piece, just a short-term piece, which if introduced by the government would probably have people going, no, uh, but, if it's imp introduced by a private entity, people go, hmm, got a lot of visibility, still gets a lot of visibility, whether it's positive or negative, it gets a lot of visibility. It gets a lot of eyes. And I, I can't speak for Australia, but a recent report that I read said that 16% of the US population has bought or owned, bought and sold cryptocurrencies. That's more than on gold, by a wide margin. So they do have adoption. 